Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Mo ICT. In this tutorial, we're going to be making a uh, level changing game where you can go from one level to another level and then come back from level two back to level one. Okay, so let's take a look at what this um, game does. Okay, I'm just going to click on start. So right now uh, we have the first level loaded. You have a key and the door, right? So I have to go collect the key uh, in order to open the door. Okay, so as soon as I go touch the door, the game will then move to level two. So in this case, I've changed the player's color and the uh, level two text changes. Also the position of the door and the key is now reversed. So I can also go and collect the key again. And this time when I go hit that door and it goes back to level one again. So we will be making this project in Visual Studio. Let's go and create a new project. In this screen, click on create a new project. We'll pick the Windows Form.NET framework. Uh, call this one moving through multiple levels. Click create. Okay, so this is going to be the level one for the game. So we're just going to start the game here and then we'll move, uh, move around. So let's just set up this um, form first. So I'm just going to go here and change the background to 64, 64, and 64. So it's dark and I change the text here to say um, I just want to say call it uh, moving through levels and then just say level one here. Okay, uh, we need a couple of picture boxes. So first just gonna add a label first. Let's change the label. Let's see if we're gonna say level one. And change the size of the level to bold 14. That's fine. Move that over slightly. We we'll change the four color to white so you can see that one better on here. Okay. <clears throat> After that, we need a couple of picture boxes. So I'm going to go so picture box, drop it here. So let's call this one player. And then this one size is going to be 50 by 50. Okay. So that's the player one. I'm just going to copy and paste that twice. Okay. So one's going to be the door and one's going to be the key. So this one is going to be key. And for the image for this one, uh, you can download the images from the website. I will leave the links in the description for you guys to download and follow it through the same way in the tutorial. Now let's click on import. Go to the folder where you extracted the pictures, select both of them, click open. Now I'm going to select the key, click OK. The, the key GIF file is going to be large. So what we're going to do is inside the size mode, we're going to come here and say zoom. So that way it doesn't stretch it, but you know, you will center the image. Just make it slightly bigger and just leave it in the corner there. For this one, I can right click, choose image, do. And then I can also say zoom here as well. Then just make the door similar here. And we can just name this one door as well. Okay, so for the player, I think the background color for this one was teal, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was teal. And then we'll change the background color on the second one. So there are things that we need to set up in this form which we'll need to copy and paste into the next one as well. So if this is your level one, let's say for example, all your game logic and everything is going to be in this form. So a lot of this stuff will need to be duplicated to form two in order for the game to work. Okay, so let's set up form one first. Uh, I think last thing we need is a timer. We're going to call this one the game timer, like so. Set the interval to 20, set enable to true. And then we're going to go to the events and say timer event. Okay, that's added to the C sharp script. Now, if you come back to the form, uh, we need a couple of more things. So, we need a key down, say key is down right here. And then for the form, we also need the key is up. Okay, so these are the events that we need. Okay, uh, we need one more event, and that's going to be the on closed. So the form close. So I'll say on, on, on close. Okay, 
closed. Okay, let's add the variables for this one. So right above the form one, uh, here are the variables. So you have got your uh, boolean, go up, go down, go left, go right. One integer for player speed is gonna control how fast the player is moving. And a boolean for got key. So we know whether we have got the collected the key or not. Okay. So in the key is done function, uh, we're going to be looking at the keys left, right, up and down on the keyboard. And if any of these keys are pressed, go left, go right, go up or go down. Boolean will be true individually when those individual keys are pressed. And then we're just going to reverse that in the go key is up function. So in the key is up function, when the keys are released, those same Booleans will be set to false. Okay, and then inside the on form closed application, is we are basically going to say on form closed once that event is triggered, then say application dot exit. So that way we are forcing the program to exit and close. Inside the primer event, uh, you have got the four movements for the player. So you got the go left. If the player is going left, then um, go left boolean is true. Then player dot left is going to be minus equals player speed. If it's uh, if go right is equal to true, then player dot left is going to be plus equals to player speed because it's going to add uh, the value to the right of the player in order to move it in that direction. And the same is going to go for go down and go up. So if it's go down, player dot top in this case is going to be plus equals player speed, and go up is going to be minus equals player speed there as well. <clears throat> Okay, this if statement here is checking if uh, the key, so which is uh, this one here, he renamed it, yes, um, the key picture box here and the player picture box here, do they, are they intersecting with each other? So basically, um, if the boundaries of the picture box and the key um, are similar to each other, then there's a collision. In that case, we're going to set got key boolean to true. And then key the visible is going to be equals to false. So uh, as soon as we um, go near the key or touch the key, the go got key boolean will be set back set to true, and then the key picture box will be invisible in the game. So let's just uh, run the app now. Let's see why it does. Okay, so in this case, I can move the player up down left and right, and when I go collect the key, the key has disappeared. Okay, I just need to go and catch the door now. So what we can do here is if you go back to the solutions explorer, we need to add another level to the game. So now I just need to right click on the form, uh, right click on the project name here, click on add, go to form, windows form, I want to name this one level 2. Okay, so this is going to be our level 2. And then now we can actually call it from here. So for this one, um, as soon as we hit the door, the similar way that we hit the key right and in this case we're going to add another extra condition where we're going to say and and got key is um true as well so call the level two and then we're going to call this level two class a new level that's a new instance of the level two right and then we're going to hide the current form stop the game timer set the got key to false and then show the new level Okay, so if we try to run this now, so if I go and touch the door before I get the key, nothing happens. I've got the key. So as soon as I touch, that one is closed and then this one comes up. So right now we are currently running on level two, right? And we just need to add our components to this one. Okay, so one of the reasons that we did the exit yeah, so as you can see, I closed that form right now. Okay, but the Visual Studio is still debugging the program. The reason being is because it has got um, this part. When we hide the form, it hasn't released the resources from there. So when we do the form closed exit bit here, we kind of force the application to close and then release the resources that it's using behind the scenes. Okay, so I'm just going to stop the debugging process here. Then we get to that part in a minute so as soon as i go to the form one i'm just going to press ctrl a so it's going to select all the components here copy all of them and then ctrl v i'm going to drop you all in there 
Um, now let me go to the form and make some changes. Hey. To this awesome game, okay. nice, yeah. Okay, and then let's go look at the back color. Let's set the back color to something slightly lighter, similar to before, isn't it? Yeah, that's what that would do. Something a little bit different than before. So I'm just going to change this one's text to level two. And change the player color to something like a white, maybe. It's more visible, this background. Okay, and move the door and the key. So can okay, move the key on this side, or maybe move the door on this side. Yep. The player here to be honest. Right, so with this done, uh, because we copied and pasted the components, that that doesn't really copy and paste the events that we need for this form, because in eyes of Windows form, this is a completely separate form from the last one. So we can't really bring the events into this one without some sort of uh, modification the classes and stuff. So the easiest way to do this would be to copy and paste some of the events that we have used in the last one with the same name. And just paste into this one and it would work exactly the same way okay just to start let's go and add the timer event to this if i go to properties click on events say that timer event is not empty so i'm just going to call this one timer event e and the second one is going to be keys down and keys up so keys down for the form and then is up okay also we need the form closed one that's the important one on form closed okay so we've got the events that we need we'll copy and paste the variables from this one to this one here so right before this and you might be wondering why we can't just copy and paste the entire class in here Right, and it's usually a good idea to do it step by step rather than copy and pasting a massive amount because sometimes um, unintentionally we might overwrite things that we don't need to. Okay, so inside the timer event, I'm just going to copy and paste the whole thing. So, save some time right here yeah so just the function this is already called the player and everything else uh, we, we will make some changes to this in a minute okay and then we only have the keys down and the keys up okay, and this one keys up is back to false and this one is application by exit that's simple enough. Okay, that would do really. And for this one, instead of calling level two, uh, new level, so we can still call it new level, but we might need to call form, we need to call form one instead of level two. So form one, let's call it new level equals new form one. Okay, so just by doing that, we are referencing this form here which is called form one. So the first one here, this one is called form one and this one is called level two. So inside of form one, we are referencing it to level two. Inside of level two, we are referencing it back to form one. Okay. So if we were to try this now, we'll go collect the key, move over here. As you can see now I can also move around here as well and I can go collect the key in level two when I go back here it goes back to level one okay hopefully this one was useful for you and I'll see you on the next tutorial.